or his wife's lover, I should say. And, um, of course, many people didn't take him seriously until the story came out, right? So, but he asked about five people to do it. And so, since he couldn't do it, um, he gave up on the thought, but then someone came forward and decided to help him. And so, they had this plan. They did this plan that they followed the the lover for about four months and they knew the routine and when he was leaving the mother's house or whatever um that's when they killed him right in the street they shot him five times in the head and left him for dead in the street and that was the father's revenge so um new information came to light and so my brother is a cop and at this time he just became a detective please hold and so um he just became a detective detective now many people think just because i am the sister-in-law that i know everything that goes on in my brother and that's just not the case. And so, um, they've been looking at my friend's father for a while because people were coming forward and people were just, you know. And so, when they had enough evidence, what ended up happening was my um, friend's ace father used to drive a school bus and my brother and law and the police force, you know, decided to take him down on the morning of one of his routes, like early in the morning before he started picking up kids for school. So, back to the story. So, the moment that my friend told me to turn on the news, all this is now unfolding. And so, um, all of a sudden, my friend, A, stopped answering all my calls. She, um, wouldn't answer my text message. She wouldn't answer, um, my calls. Her husband wouldn't answer my calls. Nothing. It was just like, all of a sudden, it was Majestic's fault. It was, it was my fault that our father got arrested for murder. Like, what in the actual fuck? Your father had, like, 20 years of freedom after what he did. And I had absolutely nothing to do with it. I knew nothing of the sort. I knew nothing of the affair. And so it got back to that friend B now was saying to me, oh, you know, friend A is mad at you. And I'm like, for what? I didn't do anything. And she's like, well, she felt as if you should have gave her heads up. And I'm like, how do I give a heads up to something that I didn't even fucking know about? Like, make it make sense. Like, and, my, and the, the crazy thing about the whole situation is, like, I get it, but are we just gonna ignore the fact that your that your your father shot somebody, and on top of that, trying to get try to get a hitman prior to that? Like, get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. And so, you know, but like I said, at this point, we've been friends for like almost twenty years, and so I'm just like. You know, so I continued trying, and I, I felt like a fool. I tried for months, 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 and she still wouldn't respond. And I tried to contact her on social media, and for her birthday and stuff, um, birthdays, month of day, I sent her, I sent her, um, like flowers and stuff like that. And I even went to her house, like to see um, how she was doing. She wouldn't let me in, so after a while, I just said, "Fuck it, I was done." And then I found out from friend B that um, friend A was just talking all this shit about me. And the funny thing about it is, it's funny how, like, friend A and B all of a sudden got close all of a sudden again. And it's like, friend B, and all she always had was, like, negative things to say about friend A. It was like, as she got older, she realized that she didn't even like friend A. So it's like, friend A and friend B, as they got older started to not like one another and I'm not that friend to like repeat what friend A or friend B said to the other one I am not that type of person I keep everything in here and that's that right but it's like 
all of a sudden it's like friend A is now all of a sudden calling friend B for like support and comfort and sympathy and it's like you've been telling me for the last 10 years you hate this bitch but you're turning to her but then you're mad at me because my brother was actually doing his job like I have no control over what my brother does if they kick down your door if they stop you driving give you a ticket that's I have no he's not here my he's not here my fucking husband like I, I don't understand why I got blamed for that but after a while like I let it go and then um and then friend A had the nerve to tell friend B that she was really really upset because you know um I should have came through or warned her or some bullshit like that and um what else did she say? Um, oh, and I should have tried harder to make amends. Like, bitch, after I called, text your husband, you sent you flowers for birthday. Like, Mother's Day came to your house. Like, what more do you want me to do? Like, I'm not gonna kiss your ass. Like, get the fuck out of here. You know my number. So, when you get a chance, then you fucking call me. It is what it is. Like, and there's nothing for me to explain. I don't know shit. I, I, I don't know shit. But I think what bothered me the most, and she's going around and then she's like saying like all these rumors about me that it's my fault that our father got arrested. How the fuck is it my fault? Me and friend B. Friend B, again, actually, like I said, we went to dinner, I mean, shopping for Christmas. And she called me and turned me into the news. We both found out the same time. I knew, and at this point too, like I said, my brother-in-law always kept his, like, cop business separate because where we were from, people knew me, people knew him, and it was just best to keep things, you know, separate, so, um, so all in all, that's how I lost my first best friend. So, um, and like, it, it's just, it's just amazing how she wanted me to do more. Like, what did you want me to do? I, I, I just couldn't understand that. And then, of course, um, her sisters went around saying that I ruined their family and I tore their family apart. And, you know, we needed to mind our business. I kept saying, I, we, I'm not the fucking cop. We don't even have the same last name. Like, I how did I fuck? So we're just gonna ignore the fact that your mother, and it's so funny because, um, as the stories came out and as, like, the courts, you know, in the trial came out, it came out that, um, my friend's mother, friend A, her mother was a whore. It is what it is. Because men were coming up saying, oh yeah, you know, I came to her house Saturday, Sunday. She used to sneak men in when he used to go to work. Like, get the fuck out. Like, we're gonna ignore the fact that your mother was a whore. And then we're gonna ignore the fact that your father actually murdered your mother's lover. But I fucked up your family. Like, bitch, I hope you're watching this shit. Make it make sense, you stupid bitch. Like, what the actual fuck? Like, <laughs> okay. Well, moving on. And, you know, um, when I got sick the first time around, um, like I said, you know, I, I noticed in life, like, sometimes when you're no longer, um, useful to people, relationships change, right? So, I always used to be the babysitter for A and B's kids. It didn't bother me. You know, um, they love me, I love them, right? But it's also too like the moment I got sick, you know, um, and like I was going to like my own shit with my own personal life. It was like a relationship went downhill because now I can no longer do for you that you're used to. But then, when it was time to come through for me, I was still sitting there by myself. And it's so funny, I have done so much for friend A and their family and just like, just a whole lot. Like I can sit here, actually I done a lot for A and B, but I think I've done more for B. So we're gonna switch over to that. So, but once, um, so that's how um, friend A and I stopped talking. That's some bullshit, right? 
so and the funny thing about it is I always say in life right there's always a time and place to like you know put things aside and come through for people right but after my attack she never did that she never said sorry uh, I'm sorry to hear about it or came through or a card or nothing nothing even to this day nothing 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 and that is so fucked up because like I said I had nothing to do of like what happened and you know once I realized that I wasn't even gonna get that level of respect I just completely 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 washed my hands with um friend A family kids all of it I completely 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 washed my hands I had some um like bank stuff set up for her children for the future I just canceled all of it like I just done I just completely like erased her from my mind I will never speak to her ever again like period right so let's go to friend B so friend B you know um it's so funny because friend B all of a sudden was like you know always on the phone with friend A and again those two always spoke about one another makes me wonder what they said about me but like I was that friend that was always like the problem solver <clears throat> I was always that friend like you know um can you babysit I have a date or can you help me pay my mortgage this month or rent or you know um I'm in trouble I need a I need help doing this and I'm pregnant and I can't keep it like I was that friend to come to right I was that friend that would hop in a car and drive like seven hours if you needed me I was that friend right so A and B were never like that so it just it amazes me how like after me and A had that blowout over my brother-in-law which again not my fault not my problem but all of a sudden now they're getting closer again and um it was just really really weird just like the relationship all of a sudden but and so anyway um after and so after my attack and when I came down with cancer I remember um your friend B was there she was a little distant and I felt it but it was what it was and so you know there was times that she would call me and and she wanted to talk about stuff but I I just been I just been attacked like I'm having a lot of surgeries I'm a lot of medication so was I as attentive as I usually and should have been no but under the circumstances I kind of had a fucking reason but that wasn't good enough it was like well, what do you mean you're going to sleep or what do you mean you can't listen to me or what do you mean call back and then there was a couple of times that like she really wanted to drop her kids off at the hospital so I can watch them so she can go out it's like where was the respect of maybe I need to rest you know I'm going to therapy I'm having nightmares and all she cared about was like dropping her raggedy ass kids off like I, I don't understand people I, I seriously don't because they know damn well if it was them and something like this happened to them I would not act like this and they fucking know it and so I just I don't know so one day like she kept calling she kept calling and I picked up and she's like finally and I'm like girl girl I just had surgery yesterday okay I am in pain I'm in the hospital I'm in pain like I don't have time to sit there and tell you what dress to wear on your date like what the fuck and then she had the audacity to go off on me and she was like you know I'm a just dick I'm tired of this shit you know a friendship should be both ways and I'm sitting here saying to myself is this bitch fucking for real like And actually, and she was the one that, like, I was telling her, like, what happened during my attack. And she was the one that was, like, relaying messages to people. And, like, I, I, I always wondered how some of my attackers knew, like, what I said or whatever. And, um, like, a lot of things came out in court. And then I realized. 